Blair has responded uh, to some of the criticism she was getting about uh, Cruel World Happy Minds, who made a critical video about her, um, generally complaining that Blair complete I, I can say lied, outright lied, uh, about the contents of a DM, making her out to be a poor researcher, argumentative, accusing her of, of stealing. Um, I, I think it's okay to defend yourself publicly. And this is something I've also told Blair too. It's like, I took a situation public because I felt a strong need to defend myself and kind of, you know, like, it, you know, when you, whenever you feel like you're attacked, you know, it's like, it's kind of, I think people get on that attack mode and then, you know, need to defend themselves. And I think that's also what happened in the situation in the first place to begin with, you know, and um, on her side as well. And so like, we both kind of were in that attack mode defensive against each other. First, we talked about the more recent stuff that really kind of picked up with the Legal Eagle call out. She did this really ridiculous call out thread against Legal Eagle, claiming that him and his editors were trying to copy their style, when in reality, all it was was one of Legal Eagle's editors reaching out to try and figure out how they did an effect. So I'm sure as all of you know, uh, many things have been said about me in the past week, like week and a half-ish. And I'm someone who often doesn't speak my side of things. And that's something that's also been noted. Just for kind of full transparency in this, I'm gonna be working from some of like my notes that I've written to accomplish two main things. The first is mainly to keep me on track with the subject matter and off of tangents. I know I like to go off on tangents and talk about various topics all the time, but this is not that time. The second reason is really just to keep my emotions in check. Um, a lot of the things that I'm going to talk about in in the like most of this video to be totally honest with you are things kind of from the past they involve old friends um, people that i used to consider close friends and i used to trust and really enjoy spending time with and kind of reopening a lot of these wounds is really painful for a little bit of context i made a thread a few days ago outlining in rough detail why i left the old sad milk collaboration channel partially to clarify that i wasn't associating with illuminati anymore in more recent events and my reasoning for that a couple days ago a creator a former friend and an employer named by blair aka illuminati made a video discussing a few controversial topics she'd been the spotlight of after discussing her first two controversies in her video she moved on towards another topic a group channel by the name of sad milk accusations against a former member and lastly me and as you may have noticed, I take up a fairly lengthy portion of her video. Hi everyone, it's me again, and Squish Gang is present. We have a monster of a video. Because today we are unpacking the allegations, the drama, if you want to call it that, the whole scandal, everything about Illuminati, the YouTube channel, and as well as kind of my general take in all this as well as like her rhetoric in the delivery of her responses and interactions with those involved as well as the fan base first links to social media ways to support the channel including patreon and youtube members down below along with any affiliate links including every jewels and gerard cosmetics and anything that i could have linked for the makeup on my face I want to thank my patrons and YouTube channel members on the screen right now. And uh, the sources will also be properly credited below and I will not be plagiarizing them. T T T T T T. Okay. All right. So four parts of the video today. Ooh. Part one, a brief summary of who Illuminati is. Part two, the drama and allegations as of a couple of weeks ago, I guess because you'll see why in a second. Part three, an analysis of Illuminati's response video. And I know that timeline is backwards, but it's because I'm going in this with hindsight because the rhetoric is based on what she knew going in, which is what the click and Wonderstruck knew as well. And part four, I added at the last minute, the leftist mafia podcast response. And before we get into everything, just for those of you who are new to my The Rhetoric Of series, it is not necessarily a comprehensive history on somebody or everything that has gone on. It is more connecting key concepts to rhetorical analysis, rhetoric meaning argumentation. This is not a psychology video either. Rhetoric is kind of how you deliver your messages in the common day through discourse and speech and just kind of, you know, word choice and stuff like that. If you would like more comprehensive videos, I will put down below iNabber and Tamimi's videos on everything because those are well done and comprehensive, but this is not what that's gonna be because if I was just gonna do another time video I would just be the same as everybody else so with that being said let's get into part one so part one as we know the brief summary of who Illuminati is Illuminati is a faceless essay format channel that exploded in fame from making anti-MLM content 
Blair, who hired a team, used to isolate to MLM content specifically, but now has moved it only to, from what I recall, MLM Mondays and began to discuss more broad topics connected to kind of business practices and shady interactions that involve capital to some extent scams, things like that. With the the hiring of this large team and moving away from the more niche MLM content allowed for Blair to become a very big channel, engrossing over 1.5 million subscribers. The SE format style that Blair has is not particularly unique. Well, she might disagree with me saying that. There are channels that I found to be quite similar to this to some certain circumstances based on just structure and format such as like Primic, The Right Opinion, Jay Aubrey, et cetera. Mind you, those channels are more on a smaller scale as far as the team goes, given that, let's say in the case of Jay Aubrey, he does it by himself. This channel, what makes it unique to its to a certain extent is that form of content with almost daily uploads. So it's a mix of that output, but also that quote unquote professional looking delivery. Now, from somebody who... I'm in graduate school at like a good school, and I did my undergrad at a good school, I think... I don't, I'm not super keen on people calling it professional in this circumstance as far as like what Blair's videos are like because it's, when you're doing professional media content and things like that, it needs to be vetted through third parties a lot of the time and there's a lot more cross-referencing and reading between different parties and with like legal guidelines that are being followed. This is my first interjection of will probably be many throughout the video, but I wanted to say that I am comparing this on like to Canadian journalistic standards and they are typically higher than that of the United States, which, which is the country that Blair resides in. But regardless, for someone who says that they have like these super professional videos, super unbiased videos, very professional style, that sort of level of professionalism is what it sounds like she's comparing her videos to. That's the point that I was trying to make. And I find that YouTube videos are just not that deep. Not saying that they're not worthwhile, but I Blair's kind of push to this professionalism and this status is a problem that comes up in different points of the video. So that's just my two cents also. Like, obviously, you can disagree with me. Like, I'm, I'm never going to have videos here where it's just sitting here being like, you need to agree with me. Like, that's not the case. Blair is the head of the Illuminati channel, if that wasn't already clear. It's the voiceover lady slash triangle head lady in the videos, right? So Blair has been involved with and fell out with many different communities on YouTube from the anti MLM community, as well with issues with channels like Crew World Happy Mind, and then the commentary community having issues with Tipster and Tommy NC and people like that. And then also issues with people in the Reddit community, such as the Click, and apparently the legal community having with having issues with Legal Eagle, and now I guess the leftist community with the recent kind of what's been going on with the Leftist Mafia podcast. We will get to that, however, part four. We got a lot to talk about today. We can see how this backlash has actually built up over a very long time. And this is going to bring us to our first rhetoric segment. And I want to add to this as well that I mentioned this in my a live video made a long time ago that I seem to reference a lot, but the rhetoric and impact of no more lies. And I'm saying that because the reason why the James Charles cancellation was so successful and so long standing was because it had built up over many issues while well, smaller over time. And this I find is that same sort of circumstance because of the amount of people that were willing to come out with their own stories. So we need to discuss Blair's issues with argumentation. Blair takes this sort of zero negotiation position in her claims um, outside of her videos that are obviously like written by a team of people. There seems to always be an attempt to approach the situation as a sort of gotcha moment. Um, this results in a lack of what's called stasis in her arguments. And I'm going to read a little bit from this lecture transcript book from Purdue University. This is the book. I'm going to attempt to tag it down below. I got to be real with y'all. I got this from boyfriend's recently deceased grandfather who was like 93 years old. This just ended up in his house, like his parents' house. And I yoinked it because I was like, none of y'all are going to read this except for me. So if I can find where to buy this, I will put it down in my rhetoric book list or something or I'll source it. Otherwise, this is what it is. Because I don't genuinely, like, this is the only book that's like this. I genuinely don't know where this came from. The next concept I want us to look at is called stasis. 
In classical rhetoric, stasis refers to the general agreement between opposing parties about what the terms of the argument are. In other words, a commonly held definition or understanding of the issue that is disputed. The problem, as you might guess, is that often the parties that are in conflict with one another or won't agree on a common definition, or they will not understand the argument in terms and it can't be moved upon that initial disagreement. If I refer to the issue as one thing, but you see it as something else, we're not likely able to stage a productive argument about it. We'll certainly disagree with each other, maybe passionately so, but our argument is not going to go anywhere because we'll spend all our time fighting over the terms and the labels we want to use. You could probably see already how the concept of stasis is related to the notion of commonplace. Both hinge on the need for agreement. Let's go back to the example of commonplace for most Americans of the right to pursuit of happiness. I mentioned earlier that while most U.S. citizens would agree that this right is a good thing, they may have very different views on what constitutes happiness and how one should pursue it. And here's where the idea of stasis comes into play. So stasis, for to put it back into like people terms, just means that you're understanding what you're arguing about. You are both on the same page about what the issue is. And Blair, not at all, because in her response or like her Illuminati exposed video or whatever, she turns, she flips it from this sort of apology video, which seemed upon first glance is what it is and what people were like the opposing party being the general audience being like, this is what it's going to be about. This is what we're talking about. And then flips it on its head to this hit piece. So there's a clear disagree, passion disagreement, but no stasis in that representation. And Blair is very vicious and vengeful and turns everything into these grotesque, twisted, personal disagreements and ignores all need for stasis, even though, again, it's this person whose content tries to position themselves as logical. I think the biggest thing you could take away from this channel is a lot of people who position themselves as logical are just angry and petty and don't want to ever be called angry and petty. So this is the position they put themselves in. Oh boy, there's going to be a lot of water breaks today. So the main issue again with Blair here is that not only does she possess zero stasis in any of your arguments, she makes a point to attempt to prove her own innocence, but through intentionally, allegedly in Minecraft, destroying the possibility for any others to do so by unearthing things that the internet considers stuff you can't come back from like if we're talking about the click this like bringing up slurs stuff or wonderstruck was with weaponizing his mental health i'm calling wonderstruck him because i checked the social media and couldn't find any different pronouns if i'm wrong i apologize in advance so blair has recently come under fire for many different reasons revolving her as an employer her as a friend her as a content creator just her general relationships with people and this segues us beautifully i know it's almost like i wrote this down to <laughs> part two which is going through the drama and allegations so in 2020, seemingly like everyone else on YouTube, I was consuming an absolutely ungodly amount of anti-MLM content. This included channels like Illuminati and Cruel World Happy Mind. I was actually subscribed to Cruel World Happy Mind, Cruel World Happy Mind, girl, I can't say that, <laughs> before she was even monetized. And I, I believe it was at like 900 subs. She actually went by a different channel name, which I just think was her actual name. I'm not going to say it because... By now, that would just kind of be doxing. But point is, I'm saying I've been in the trenches. First controversy I was aware of regarding Illuminati was actually during this time. Given that most of the videos I watched in research skipped over this particular debacle, I'm going to outline this particular situation in full while skimming over a lot of the other ones. Circa 2020-ish, it would be late 2020. Anyways, Circa that time, Cruel World Happy Mind received a DM from, I would assume, one of her subscribers that said, hey, I was watching an Illuminati video about this situation that you also discussed, and the script and the structure seemed to be really, really similar. Then Cruel World Happy Mind sent Blair a DM about it, kind of being like, yo, home dog, I heard about this. Do you want to talk about it? Kind of what's going on? Which Blair allegedly misrepresented in the Welsh's Twins podcast called Double Cleanse on their episode from September 20th of 2020. I'm going to put that clip in right now. Something I recently learned apparently is there is this whole uh, 
anti-MLM community, mm. right? I kind of thought I was on my own little island doing my <laughs> own thing. Maybe that's my own ego. Um, I don't watch <laughs> their anti-MLM videos because yeah. I don't want to know what other people are saying or other people Some, think. I don't want mm. it influencing what I do. Yeah. So I purposely um, like have terms like that blocked from my YouTube mm. search stuff. Yeah. I don't want to see it. And it's not out of... I don't know, any rudeness, meanness, whatever. No, I just, no, yeah. I can't care. And that kind of stuff can't influence me. Yeah. Um, what I did have happen though recently, which this is, I don't, I'm going to try and keep it vague. So I don't mention this person's channel, Yeah. yeah. but uh, it's a, it's a very small YouTuber. And she DM'd me on Instagram claiming that I copied her. <laughs> and okay. <laughs> she, claimed but, yeah. that I, she claimed that I copied her video that she had done Ooh. maybe a couple weeks ago. Right. And the video that I had done the topic on was suggested to me multiple times from my comment section. So I just listened right. to my comments and I made a yeah. video because that's what people were interested in my opinion on. Yeah. Um, so she messages me and she goes, I'm just really disappointed because you're someone I look up to and you copied my video and I want credit. Right. So I didn't know who this person mm. was. So I went to my moderators and my discord server and I was like, hey, um, I screenshotted the message. I sent it to them. And I said, do you know, is this a YouTuber? Can you guys like tell me who this is or what they're even yeah. talking about? Because I had no idea. Yeah. They come back to me. It's a small channel. I'll just say less than 50,000 uh, subscribers right. at the time. And uh, she sources me. She uses me as a source in her videos. <laughs> for one. So I found it kind of funny. Um, and she... <laughs> I was, like, I was like, I was like, you can't claim that I'm copying you oh, when you no. use me as a source. Heidi. Exactly. But yeah. <laughs> she sources me, and uh, and then I, obviously the first thing I did before even looking at her videos is I went to look at her sourcing list because I think mm. that's really important. Is what do you use? And she had yeah. five sources. You know, I have to use a pastebin document because right. I have anywhere yeah. thirty to yeah. seventy sources per video. I don't yeah. play around. But she had like five sources. You know, one was Wikipedia, one was BuzzFeed, one was like TMZ or Buzzfeed. something. Oh my god. The most, um, yeah. You know. Oh god. <laughs> yeah. And and those sources are okay for a reference on certain things like mm. i use wikipedia as a starting point because wikipedia will generally give you an outline of where you should start looking um but th those were her sources and then she sits down for a video uh maybe 30 40 minutes long drinks a coffee is distracted the whole time and just gives her opinion on how she feels about things and i said i said oh, you I cannot think. believe for one second ma'am that i'm copying you you are yeah. giving an yeah. opinion i don't yeah. do that and she even admitted well kind of that she was restructuring her channel to kind of mock my own channel so i was like so you're taking my formula uh, essentially like you're looking at how i outline my videos you're trying to replicate that and then when i cover a topic that you've already covered i guess then you say that i'm copying you but i was Copy like honey that. i've been doing the same thing like that's not my fault yeah <laughs> and this and then she deleted like... the dm after a couple days but oh. i kept the screenshot yeah and i was like i will remember this i won't say yeah. anything but i'll remember it <laughs> i've screenshotted everyone who does. Yeah. <laughs> I screenshot it too. <laughs> this is because you're you are in such a niche Mm -hmm. like um, YouTube like genre category as well because like you said there, there aren't many people doing it and the ones that aren't aren't quite on no, I can't say on your level I, they're, they're not quite the same I don't they're kind of almost more like a like a uh, the beauty drama channels. They're more yeah, it's about exactly. the tea, it's being casual, yes. and that's yeah. really what the difference is. It's, yeah. it's nice to watch yours that seem like it's done in the more of a documentary style, mm. and then there's reaction, funny, funny, funny. Yes, know? yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So it's, it's you can't really people are going to talk about the same subject. People are going to talk about you know similar things that are popular within that very mm. niche category. Mm -hmm. You know, you can't then start throwing around that oh exactly. you're copying me and you're allowed to talk about that. Listen, you know? I could do a smoky eye and someone messages me, you're copying me. Are you kidding exactly. me? Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> like, <laughs> come on now. Uh, but I mean, yeah, I don't discuss with most of this apparent MLM community. Um, mm. and, and this DM that I received was one of the first instances where I realized there was another community. Mm -hmm. And and so that introduction was very negative. So I choose, yeah. now that I know this community exists, I choose not to really associate with them out of more of like disgust from this first message where I go, yeah. I don't want to be associated with that kind of pettiness, that kind of mm -hmm. behavior. It's just not, like it yeah. detracts yeah. from our message. Like what I is the message like, of this community? Right, yeah. exactly. And I do feel like it's people jumping on the bandwagon or something they see as picking up in popularity rather than having mm -hmm. this passion for it that you have and wanting to, you know, not expose in that way, but you know, talk, you know, bring this to light for everyone. Like you said, these are people jumping on a bandwagon, sitting there, reading off a few things they quickly Googled and, you know, like you said, jumping on the tea side of it mm. and, you know, that they don't have that same passion for it that you clearly do. And that shows for other people's videos, but... It, it doesn't. Yeah. It's, it's not to hate on them. You know, it's a, no, it is no, a different no. type of content. That's not mm. what I do. So it offers a new perspective. And I just, personally, to me, I feel like if you're going to be part of this apparent anti-MLM community, which is weird for me to say because I'm still just kind of <laughs> like, that, that doesn't exist, but it does, yeah. apparently. Um, the message is supposed to be, right, helping inform those who might be trapped in an MLM, right, realize exactly. that something's mm -hmm. not right here, or helping prevent people from going into them. And right, like yeah. you guys said, making fun of the people stuck in there, making fun of, mm -hmm. you know, that kind of stuff, not doing your research, putting half-assed information into the world, yeah. and then turning around, and then trying to be petty and attack other creators in the same space who are trying yeah. to spread a message of awareness is tacky and it cheapens the overall message and it shouldn't be something that exists it's not a personal thing yeah. this is a if you're going to abide by putting this message out into the world you have to follow through with it and there's no exceptions to exactly. that exactly yeah 100%. with this i also want to insert a 
clip from my research stream that kind of shows my initial reaction to this because I think I want you to understand where I'm coming from in these types of conversations. The thing is, right, who cares? Like, this, like, oh, she's drinking a coffee and she's stating her opinion. How dare she make a face cam video? Why did I turn into, what? who have I turned into there? The, the foot lettuce guy. What's his name? Chills. Chills, yeah. Why would you have copying accusations when obviously it is not that deep? But that's the thing, right? It's like, it's just so strange. I never understood these like video essay goblins and like being like, how dare you do a face cam? How dare you not afford crazy editing softwares and have tons of money for computers that run these types of things because that's the other thing right i can't do i can't like like a jay aubrey style video which has like four tracks it's like an hour long my computer would kind of explode like you know so in this self-imposed seriousness that you could see from my reaction but also the podcast clip Blair undermines this a casual style of deliver, delivery within the online space as an effective way to deliver information. But I feel like channels like Crew World Happy Mind or even my own channel prove that a lot of people kind of prefer this more conversational format. And I think it's a bit classist to a certain extent for Blair to be saying these things because to have these like huge, I don't think people understand how expensive a huge production type piece like that would sometimes be. Because just the editing softwares required or the power of a computer for editing softwares to the extent that they are loading them with is very expensive. This camera alone, and this is like bottom line, mirrorless, is $1,200 Canadian dollars. So about a thousand US dollars. Like, <laughs> you know what I mean? Like just have a camera like this. And I know a lot of these people are faceless, but even then just like Premiere Pro is... <sighs> 30 something Canadian a month, 40 Canadian a month, or like Vegas Pro's like $600. Point is, these things are super expensive and time consuming. And let's pretend like you're using DaVinci Resolve and it's free. You would still need to be like taking time out of like your day. And if you have an, an actual like other job, like it's gonna be very difficult to do. So presuming that everybody needs to do these like grand sort of essay format edit faceless type things to be taken seriously and having casual conversations doesn't allow for a message to be delivered is fallacious at best and I think a stupid point to make with that being said I, I don't understand who this girl thinks she is because and other people have pointed this out but I think it was tipster that mentioned this, but like, I agree completely. She's just a glorified voice actor. Like you have a team of editors, you have a team of researchers, and then you have e like your um, little triangle lady is like pre-designed. So you're just reading off a script and you're reading off a script because you see how like I'm not looking at this or I look down at it for a second, I come back. Like I have to remember this to a certain extent. You don't even have to memorize it when you're doing a voiceover. You could just read it entirely, right? So it's like, who are you to be pointing that out in the first place as if you have some sort of greatness because you had enough money to hire a team? Like YouTube is a personal sort of website format where like people can put out whatever they want. It shouldn't be a like pissing contest of who has the most capital to make the most extravagant video. And then that makes them inherently better. I think that is a very stupid argument to have. And I want to say one more thing too that annoys me with Blair. It's like, you, girl, you're not delivering university lectures, okay? Like this is like, you know, ooh, am way bad content. Like you're not an academic. You're not a like great mind of this generation. So who are you to be going around shitting on other people that, are also liked on the platform. It, it sort of plants the seed of this kind of vengeful persona that she has. So I also found this like interview with Camellia. I believe that's how it's pronounced. If it's not, I'm so sorry. Where they discuss like the resolution of this whole ordeal because Crew World and ha uh, Crew World Happy Mind and Blair had a conversation on the phone, talked about this, talked this through, and it supposedly resolved everything in a sort of you know, camaraderie, maybe even developed some sort of camaraderie, but like, it seems like they're not friends because I don't think I've ever heard Crew World Happy Mind say anything good about her after that, but we'll take that 
you know, we'll take what we can get here. Right. Okay. Well, this is obviously a very personal issue between us two. Let's, you know, um, let's get together and talk about it. And she was actually the one that led that, um, you know, like, obviously I had tried hard, you know, in the past for, for months to talk to her privately, but after the situation was brought public, she was like, let's, let's talk to you about it privately. And, um, and, uh, being able to have that conversation because it was such a personal, just us kind of issue and to explain both sides and in a respectful way, that was something that I really appreciated as she was completely respectful of me, like hearing, like very much listening to me. Like she was not on the defense mode when we were talking individually, she was not like, negating anything I had to say or like, you know, and, and, and same and vice versa, I think, you know, and so um, I think that was like really, really meant a lot to me. And like, I thought that was really cool. And to me, it was like, yeah, like, you know, it, that that's really all I wanted in the first place. So once that ha- happened, I was like, yeah, like there's, there's nothing to be public anymore because of this situation that had to do with us too was brought private. So given that I've spent an absolutely appalling amount of money on an English degree, I love irony, literary, literal, vocal, anything all the forms like there's probably actual forms i never said i was smart anyways we're going to transition to the legal eagle situation because blair had made a whole goddamn stink that crew world happy mind was like you might have you know taken a little too much inspiration from my video for blair to just be like legal eagle stole a plug-in give me all your money for your content re allegedly hypothetically in minecraft i want to say that the irony itself comes from blair being incredibly upset when someone accused her of plagiarism not even in like a full-blown accusation way and not publicly to then turn around and go on a twitter rant about plagiarism it's like girl do you even think (laughs) every channel that has covered this particular like the last month or whatever in Illuminati's life. I want to say I started this script on May 7th and have added to it every single day since then. So this is 20 days <laughs> in the making. Normally a script of mine lasts most at most a week. I'm going to quickly summarize this. I'm just going to look because I kind of just hit it down. Uh, Blair had a team, so she hires editors. One of the editors received an email from Legal Eagle, which is just a legal like essay-esque kind of channel. Um, an email about a particular effect that it's like a ripped piece of paper and then text that like highlights over top. And the editor from Illuminati's team that received the email to my understanding did not respond to it. But the Legal Eagle editor figured out the effect. <laughs> Blair blew up on Twitter being like, oh, my God, Legal Eagle, you suck. You stole this thing from my videos, even though it's like it, it, it's it's ripped paper. Bestie, it's. It's not even a good effect. It's not anything like creative. It's like documentaries have used this for years. It's just reading paper. It's because paper books. Yeah. Newspapers. Paper. They're made of paper. That's why they use the paper effect. It's not that deep. So I'm just throwing I never talking about this because I don't want to. Situation. I don't even understand why this part of the situation even happened in the first place. But yes, on April the 20th, 2023, Blair infamously tweeted, not legal eagles editors broaching my editors to take my video style. And when they didn't give up the information, they literally copied it. And by the way, I have the messages from my editors and found an email from them too. And they just changed the color from purple to blue. Huh? interesting. Now, ladies and gentlemen, there are quite a lot of issues as a content creator that I have with this tweet, but I'm going to hold my tongue for a second and just read the follow-up tweets that Blair made to her original tweets. So firstly, Blair shows the email that she mentioned in the first tweet, and in the email, you can see that the editor is is simply asking for a plugin that was used in Blair's video, and then she goes on to show a screenshot of where this person then came into their Discord and was asking for a specific effect, and then she goes on to post screenshots comparing the usage of effects in Blair's videos, and then this said content creator Legal Eagles videos, and oh my goodness, the colors, they're, they're so unbelievable different. And fellas, look, this is just, it's it's just, it's just absolutely silly. And I'm going to give you an example to why stealing a plugin, well, it's not exactly theft. For example, right now, as you can see, I'm on a green screen and and right now my editor jacket, she's putting up, I don't know what's behind me right now. It could be It could be anything. But what I'm trying to say here is Jacket is using plugins. As you can see here in Premiere, these are these magical things right here. And what actually is a plugin? Well, as you can see on screen right now, there are things being applied to my face, which I don't actually know what they are because I'm not in the editing software right now. But I imagine they're making me look very pretty and very cute. And the thing is, when it comes to these plugins, they can be used by absolutely anybody, whether they're just the inbuilt ones in Premiere Pro or the ones that you've bought from online services. They're all widely available. But the thing is, is Blair didn't make these plugins. Her editors didn't make the plugins. Even the editors requesting what 
plugins that were used didn't make the plugins, hence they asked for it politely in an email. So what I'm This scenario, while not necessarily that serious, cause for either like a noticing or maybe like a recall of a pattern of behavior within Blair. And notice how I said recall, right? This is because there were people that were starting to come out from her past collab channel, Sad Milk, and they wanted to describe their events on YouTube and or Twitter. Sad Milk is a channel where several creators were supposed to kind of have some goofs and gaffes about some like random stuff on Reddit. Think like Soot House in 2018. Rip. This channel did not even last for a year due to a variety of disagreements and seemingly Blair just kind of being like a rotten pickle. It's weird because I actually remember re-watching a video from Blair during that era being like, oh, I wonder what Sad Milk actually is because she would plug that channel in her videos like all the time. And then I clicked on it. There was like no content. And I was like, I didn't think anything of it at the time. Probably should have. It had already been scrubbed. And this was like not too long ago, probably six months ago at most. So there were two main hit piece videos that came in from Blair being a butthole, okay? Allegedly, hypothetically, in Minecraft. One by The Click and one by Wonderstruck Guy. Okay, those are the two main ones. I don't know who either of these people are. Uh, They're both apparently involved with Sad Milk. And again, this video that I'm making focuses more so on Blair, her approach to conflict, and her overall argumentation. So again, I'm going to quickly summarize, but We'll look at videos linked down below. I'm also going to link a couple tipster streams and Paige Christie stream because I watched a ton of stuff on this. This is not a in-depth analysis of all of the controversy in like a timeline. Rather, I'm looking at what people said and how Blair responded and why maybe she is as twisted as people are saying that she is. So the click was a member of Sad Milk and currently hosts his own successful Goose and Gaffs Reddit channel. Kind of. And he was one of the main points of conversation in Blair's response video, like Illuminati Exposed or whatever it is, uh, which we will get to in part three. So there were allegations that he ignored someone who was a on on uh, that entered his Discord server, but he was asleep. It was like 2.30, 3 a.m., wherever he is in Europe time. And he showed the receipts and he, so he showed, like in Blair's video, she showed receipts that like he didn't act fast enough and that she had to tell people about it. She jumped in a call with people to be like, oh my God, what's going on? He showed receipts to the contrary that showed that it was actually dealt with. It seemed like, if I remember correctly, if he said it was like two in the morning, they were banned by like 2.14, okay? Again, acting like, Blair acted like it was never fixed. Like that she was like the knight in shining armor that had to like come in and intervene and fix everything. Eventually, eventually Blair unearthed like video old videos from 10, 12 years ago, comments, things like that, that contained like slurs and stuff, particularly like a lot of the use of the R word. But it's that that word again, like I've mentioned before, I never know how to navigate this conversation because it's an ableist slur regardless. But it was like very, not that long ago, very culturally acceptable. Like you have to think there was like the Black Eyed Peas song, like let's get our word. There was like, it wasn't censored on television. It was used in a lot of books. It was used in medical journals. I'm only saying that in a way of like, try to maybe take a little bit more grace on that for now, depending on the timeline of when it was used. That's all I want to say. A point that I missed that was very vital upon recording this initially is it doesn't necessarily matter with the slurs aspect in this only because she was not doing it for the greater good of anyone. Rather, she was doing it as a way of screwing over someone else. Realistically, with how this was approached, how long she hit it and everything, she really doesn't care about the minority groups, she being Blair in this case. She does not care about the minority groups that would have been affected by these words. Like, let's be honest with ourselves here. That's my main issue. I just did not voice it well upon initially recording because I was too worried about sounding like I was pro these words, which I'm obviously 100% not. So it's just disingenuous and like gross. Number two, click using abhorrent language. Uh, content warning, mention of slurs. I will be brief here because there isn't really much substance. She claims I was tossing around slurs when gaming with friends. The only evidence she has in a group chat where she's talking to Adiwazi 
uwu, among a few others. So it isn't an actual receipt of anything I did or said. It's not even a conversation I'm in, uh, but just a few anonymous names venting in a group chat. However, to try to make sense of this, I actually asked Oz about this screenshot directly, and he had this to say. Yeah, I'm not really sure what the r -slur thing was about. I not only don't have any memories of it, but would only have to assume based on my past actions that I either A. Over-embellished to further feel accepted of the tone of one instance, never of course realizing the damage it would cause, I'm sorry about this if that is the case. B. Blair and I had discussions in relation to this and had created a behind-the-scenes narrative of what to say. This was also very common when we lived under the same roof. C. There was also watching how Blair would twist and omit truths to people. While I don't have any direct proof of this, I will say that watching Blair just say the right amount of truth to people to get their praise and adoration may have swayed me to do the same. Edit, there's also a chance that you said this like way back in 2019. I think the language I used in the group chat was more to put distance between us, not great on my part. It would have to be one of those, or a mix, honestly, because I don't remember you saying it. Not saying it didn't happen, of course, but I don't have any memories of it. I'm sorry for the pain that comment cost, man. Apologies will never, of course, repair the actions that I have made and when all this went down. I'm sure there is more shitty things I've done or said that I honestly, for the life of me, can't remember. As for Blair claiming you use abhorrent language just as the N-word, the only evidence she ever gave us was by her word, claiming that when the two of you are playing Dark Souls 3, you refer to enemies or shadows or ash as endlets, or something along the lines of that in December of 2019. This was not brought up until after Sad Milk Split. And to be clear, I don't hold a grudge about this against Oz in the least. I can't say for sure, but to me it looks like Oz was just being pushed to prove his loyalty in a way. I wish you all the best, man, and I hope you get to rebuild your channel or whatever you want to do with your life. Before we move on, I'm just gonna point out some funny hypocrisy. She said she would never be friends with someone that used that language, yet she regularly played games with me as a friend during this time, where I allegedly kept on saying these things. Which one is it? I, I don't think you can have both. And to add an extra layer of transparency on my own behalf, I didn't actually know the art word could be considered derogatory up until maybe 2020. So it's possible I said it before that point, but I don't recall specifics. When people came to me around this time and told me they had had the word used against them simply for being neurodivergent, I was surprised, as that had not been the case around me when I grew up. But I personally stopped using it in my content, or for posts I read out, and also did my best to remove jokes containing the word in older content. Simply because I didn't want my community to get the wrong idea about the values I held. I personally don't find the world too outrageous and still hear it on a regular basis on YouTube or in the online world, but I did opt out of using it in my content after this was being brought up to me by my fans. Three. That's my point on that. Anyways, allegedly Blair had paid people to unearth these receipts on the click. Like she was looking for something to put into her video and she had people scour the internet for it. Apparently messages saying that like, oh, I'll, I'll two hundred dollars if you can find this or whatever. Wonderstruck guy then made a video responding to more claims that Blair made in the response video, where she claimed that Wonder made a mess in the car she gave him, lived off of him for free, couldn't meet deadlines, and then there was like an issue with like a car contract for a BMW. But then people said that that contract would not even hold up in court. She fired him before a deadline that she had set for him. It was the deadline had been pushed a few days into the next month. And then he met the deadline of the extended one that the rep had said was there. He even flew to another state to go get his computer to do the edit it, to do the edit. And Blair still fired him for not meeting the initial first deadline that they had a conversation about to extend. The content for Wonder to edit was dependent on me being able to live stream. During this time, I unfortunately only had two streams for him to work on, which Wonder would have been able to produce about four videos from. Wonder did not meet the deadlines for either stream. Despite this, I kept him on payroll. I continued his pay, even though no work had ever been completed. Although there was only a minuscule amount of work for Wonder to do, he still managed to act up within company spaces. He made inappropriate comments on forms that were visible to other employees, he didn't complete tasks that were assigned to him, and he failed to follow company protocol. I have a strict policy regarding formal disciplines, and within his short time of working with me, he had already met the criteria for termination. After hearing this, I'd assume you'd attribute me as someone with a very poor work ethic, and I honestly would not blame you. However, while Blair is being very anecdotal here, I'd like to provide receipts that prove the following. Proof that I was not kept on payroll and I was fired before my deadline even happened. These were not short clips. The comment that I made on a forum that was grounds for termination, Blair leaving out how long it took her to actually provide content to edit, Blair leaving out that I had asked for work and various other aspects, my deadline extension due to my computer editing software corrupting, not me being lazy, me flying to another state to meet said deadlines with plane tickets provided, and again, proof that I was fired before my deadline even happened. Before we begin, I'd like to say that I was informally fired on a phone call July 27th that I received my final severance letter July 30th. But as you can see here in private DMs with an editorial manager, my deadline was extended 
to August 2nd. I was fired within my deadline. To add context, Blair had not streamed for the entire month of June, and come the further end of mid-July, she had finally streamed. I was given one stream that would result in two videos having 20 minute plus durations on both videos. So for context, these were not short clips, rather 20 to 40 minute chunks of content, which is exactly what I signed up for. This in itself was not a problem. However, upon getting far into making the video, my editing software corrupted said in a statement that it was pleased with the ruling which would allow it to continue to use treatment. So that's from this article. I was staying with my dad in Texas, which we'll touch base on why in a little bit here, and only had my laptop, which had never had an issue before. I had had this laptop for roughly, I want to say a year at this point. Never once had I run into a software corrupting issue. So I reached out to an editorial manager explaining the situation. They asked that I take PTO, but instead I held off because Oz Media said he could get my PC fixed. I was running out of time, but my deadline initially was July 26th. So last second, I flew to Colorado to get my computer just so I could turn around and fly back. It was at this time I had noticed I was locked out of the editor files, which I found odd given that I was still within my deadline. Line, but I didn't exactly know what was happening, I just had figured it was an error at the time. I'd like to make note that the other editorial manager explained to me that my deadline at this time had actually been extended to August 2nd. The editorial manager reached out to me on the 26th saying we needed to talk. For one reason or another, this conversation got pushed to July 27th. I believe this was just due to a simple scheduling conflict. I believe by the time I was able to take a call that like when I had seen the message, they were busy for the rest of the day. So it just got pushed over to July 27th. It wasn't like I was like ducking the calls like, oh my goodness. It was here on this call that I was fired for explicitly not meeting deadlines, which I find highly confusing due to once more I must reiterate that my deadline was August 2nd. Not to be redundant, but I'd like to remind you that I flew to another state just to meet this deadline for my boss who was constantly subtweeting about me. You can see is acknowledged even by one of her own managers, and they told me specifically that this was not okay behavior. A few days- There was also an alleged trigger warning mental health, by the way. There was also an alleged message sent to Blair that was one struck in really bad mental health, that he was suicidal. I say alleged because, well, no, it was an actual, it's because it's because Blair called it a suicide note. And I don't think that was necessarily what it was. One of guy kind of describes it as a message. It's a little bit confusing for me to process like what I would exactly want to define that as. Uh, Wonder also cleared up everything and showed how truly controlling Blair was from having him live in her house to forcing him to have an expensive car that he couldn't afford, BMW, amongst a lot of other things and kind of housing someone to kind of just like, make videos like edit videos for her in a very controlling way and she was very apparently very horrible to live with lived like a slob things like that there's also a brief discussion of what would happen to her on the leftist mafia podcast which i'll elaborate in part four because when i wrote this it hadn't happened yet they essentially said that they only knew her from the from the podcast and that the whole ordeal might just be the internet dogpiling on someone so the Leftist Mafia podcast, Olay refers to Blair as just a triangle, as in faceless creator, right? And that there's a sense of depersonalization that comes with the lack of a physical presence. Now we're going to read Kenneth Burke's rhetoric motives for this one. And we're going to talk about that element. So in calling her a triangle, Olay brings up this sort of idea of depersonalization, as in the lack of a physical presence and a separation in the argument. And we're going to read Kenneth Burke's rhetoric of motives to discuss kind of what that means in this context. Yet the principle of personality would be there too, though indirectly, for ideas are personal. They are personal because only persons can have them. They are an aspect of something so essentially personal as symbol using human rationality. An idea can seem impersonal because many men, or all men, may share it in its personality or partake of its substance quite like communications ritualistically or communicants ritualistically eating blood in the body of their god. Indeed, once you linger on this question of personality, you find it bristling with dialectic paradoxes whereby the personal and the impersonal subtly change places. Paradox that futilely invests humans with divine attributes, hence adding to the mystifications so important in rhetorical prodding. When a figure becomes the personification of some impersonal motive, they result as depersonalization. The person becomes the charismatic vessel of some absolute substance. And when thus magically endowed, the person transcends his nature as an individual, becoming instead the image of the idea that he stands for. He is then a representative not of himself, but of family or class substance which is identified. In this respect, he becomes divine, and his distinctive marks, such as clothing, embody the same spirit. Thus, when the principle of social reverence attains its summing up in the personal of a beloved, she is loved not merely for herself, but for what she represents. As a charismatic vessel of social motive with the lover or, or communicate would court roundabout. Indeed, 
Marriage is a sacrament so blind social religious reverence together that you cannot tell where careerism ends and God begins. That was a lot of huge words. And I get that that was a lot of huge words. Okay, I get it. This is saying that when you've grown beyond a point of representing a person, but rather a set of ideas and Illuminati by being a faceless creator, but yet also kind of identifying with being against a capitalistic scam based endeavor kind of separates herself from a person. And that is why initially the Leftist Mafia podcast, like, cast, kind of felt that it wasn't really going to be something of true substance when talking about the allegations against Blair. They later retract this, and we will talk about this in part four. While they're right as per Burke's theories, I think the intensity of the responses may be stronger because of this depersonalization. But it also helps... The opposition make their point clear as they have a presence and show their face in this being the click and wonderstruck. But to fully analyze Blair's initial response that kind of led to all of this, we're going to go into part three. And before we get into that really quickly, I also want to update that HelloFresh, as of a couple days ago, actually dropped Blair because of a random tweet. So things are starting to kind of buckle underneath her, I think. Part three, an analysis of Blair's response. So I understand that I'm te technically like making the timeline go backwards, but it's because I wanted to ana analyze this video point by point with the context, because now we are aware of the fallacies as well as how bad she has represented everything that is going on. So before we really get into analysis, I want to state that I found the total voice to be very, very bizarre and caught me off guard given that it sounded weirdly stable, but also forcibly sad at the same time. Hey everyone. Well, there's no really fun or interesting way to start this conversation. So um, you guys know what you're here for, and I'm just gonna jump into it the way I know how to. I wanna talk about the allegations today and the feelings that I have with people that came from the Sad Milk collab channel. But first, I wanna make a point to apologize to Legal Eagle. You see that? That was weird. See, that was weird. They had, <laughs> that had no tonality and it was very strange. Prior to really getting into this, we must keep in mind that this is supposed to be a persuasive piece. That is the point of these videos. That's why there's a whole like section of rhetoric around apology and there's a whole section of rhetoric around like politics and policy and because all of these pieces are attempting to persuade in some way or another. This was supposed to persuade on two different fronts. One, the apology component to Legal Eagle, and two, the expose section for Click and Wonderstruck. Now, to solidify what this persuasive piece is supposed to be structured like and what that means, we're gonna read a little bit from The Essential Guide to Rhetoric, this book. Aristotle argued for three basic points of rhetoric. Rhetoric can be treated as a coherent area of inquiry. Rhetoric is not simply, simply a collection of techniques for slick speech. It also has logic and a purpose as a faculty of observing the available means of persuasion in any given situation. In other words, by taking into account the specific qualities of an audience, a setting, and an occasion, an orator, or speaker, in this case, Blair, can figure out exactly what would be persuasive in that particular context. Two, rhetoric and logic are necessary counterparts. Rhetoric and logic, Aristotle and Plato call this the dialectic, are not opposites, but rather mutually complementary and necessary counterparts. Logic requires persuasion, and persuasion requires logic. Three, the right choices in a speech are shaped by the speech's goals and the audience's expectations. The logic and coherence of speeches are determined by their goals. To clarify this point, Aristotle classified different kinds of speech by their purposes. Forensic, for use in a trial. This would be regarding the legal components with the contracts that she brings up a ton of times. I, al I always had pr trouble pronouncing this word out loud. Epideictic, which is for use at a funeral or in a more sad circumstance. This is that sort of kind of apologetic tone and deliberative for use in Senate or politics. So this is that pushing her business ventures and her status as a narrative. All right. Three goals here. Okay. Three main takeaways. I'm reiterating because I tweaked this in my notes for Blair specifically because 
I don't want to make my videos just boring philosophy videos. We are trying to combine philosophy and tea so that it's interesting and you can learn something because I feel like when you know these things, maybe you won't end up being swayed as easily by shitty videos like Illuminati's initial video. All right. One, logic. So here's Blair's logic from what I was able to figure out. Okay. Blair being responsible for Sad Milk and her channel makes her a victim to the conflicts that came about and the so-called incompetence other parties had. Two, the goals. To vindicate herself from the conflicts that arose from Sad Milk and the Twitter rant about Legal Eagle. Three, audience expectations. A structured, stable response with proof and screenshots that clearly outlines a timeline of events. That is pretty, the expectation can be applied to almost all, if not all, response videos of this structure, okay? So this is what she attempted to do, but she negated as much responsibility as possible, and in doing that, made an allegedly clouded representation of the events that took place, which allowed for easy response videos to come out. And as I mentioned prior to the depersonalization, when people can't really associate Blair beyond this sort of corporate representation of this video essay factory, people could kind of easily believe the opposition. She began with something that was designed clearly to appease people, I find hypothetically in my opinion, which was apologizing to Legal Eagle for the Twitter situation. My editors came to me about how parts of a Legal Eagle video looked similar to our videos. And then there were messages and an email from one of Legal Eagle's editors asking for more information about how we do certain effects. I looked at the compared images that were brought to me and I said, wow, that does look pretty similar. And I impulsively posted about it on Twitter. Truthfully, I should have looked into this more instead of just putting the information out there the second I had a gut reaction about it. I should have asked him what the emails were about, but I didn't. And I made a mistake and plain and simple, I was wrong. So to Legal Eagle and, and team, I just want to reiterate that I messed up and I'm sorry for any stress this may have caused you and of course to your team. I know this I is also kind of opened a sort of Pandora's box phenomenon that transpired from all of this when she addresses really only the Legal Eagle situation. Because people were going to ask about the Twitter thread and she did remove it. So in order to meet the three aspects, goal, logic, and audience expectation, she needed to address everything with the same level of kind of innocence. So while the legal eagle thing wasn't that deep, what she was going to choose to unearth after that, she had to try to meet that same consistent three points of a consistent goal, a consistent logic, and a consistent meeting of audience expectations. So I'm going to go through the rest of the video as per substantial chapter, leaving out the Oz Media stuff because it kind of just confused me <laughs> more than anything. You can look into that more so with the other more extended videos. And Oz Media and Wonderstruck kind of talked about everything, apparently. So right now, Oz Media is helping Wonderstruck get the plaque back. And it's just been supporting Wonderstruck in everything. Osmenia lived in the house with them upon everything happening. That's what I gather. Anyways, the first chapter after Legal Eagle is regarding plagiarism and a tweet by H. Bomber Guy, who is accusing Blair of plagiarism because she quoted directly into a video a clip from a documentary. Blair defines plagiarism using dictionary definitions, but fails to elaborate on the academic definition of plagiarism and how it functions. On screen are definitions for the word plagiarism as defined by Merriam-Webster, Dictionary.com, and the University of Oxford. I'm showing multiple sources defining plagiarism, but the overall definition is going to boil down to this. Plagiarism is to take someone else's idea as their own or to not credit the source. Which, academic definition is more so if you use too many of someone's words, sequence things, in the exact same process as someone else or kind of jack their unique style, if you will, that will be involved. That will be involved in plagiarism. I take my Apple watch off because I keep hitting the button and it's yelling at me. So I'm going to give you like a bit of an example of like what could be deemed as like an academic form of plagiarism in a weird way, like to how different it is than just copying someone's work and claiming it as your own because it's not always that simple. If I wrote a story about a woman, 
who wanted nothing more than to be queen and was convinced by her husband to kill everyone else in line for the throne. Even if I mention Macbeth as an inspiration, if I don't say it is entirely based off of that story and that is the ideal idea behind the entire thing, rather not rather than just like dumping it in a citation section, that's still going to be plagiarism under certain circumstances. So Blair's like, if I put the guy's name or if I just plop it in the, you know, really difficult to sort through like um, citations documents that she has, then it's good enough. That's why I try not, I try to keep mine in the description because I always hate sifting through those documents because also like it's like mine right from YouTube. You can click right to what I'm looking at. And because as someone who has written like literature reviews in graduate school, you do not need 65 sources for something like that. Like that's nuts. <laughs> like her poor researchers, like for real. Like I'm all for being thorough, but like the Washington Post article on something and the New York Post article on something and the Sun, as they're all pretty right wing, like those would all say the same thing, for example, mostly on a certain situation. You know what I mean? Like that's obviously generalization, but you understand what I'm saying? Like to a certain like a lot of this is like she takes herself way too seriously, which I think starts to kind of push that sort of vengeful nature that she has. Now, some may, some may ask, why am I fixating on this sort of academic definition? Let's re rewind time to the <laughs> earlier in the video where Claire, Blair, uh, I keep saying Claire because I lived with a lady named Claire like a long time ago. Blair claimed that she was so much more professional and so much smarter than Crew World Happy Mind. And we're going to replay that clip from the podcast. And... Uh, she sources me. She uses me as a source in her videos, for one. So I found it kind of funny. Um, and she, <laughs> I, was like, I was like, I was like, you can't claim that I'm copying you oh, when you no. use me as a source. Honey. Exactly. But yeah. <laughs> she sources me, and uh, and then I, obviously the first thing I did before even looking at her videos is I went to look at her sourcing list because I think mm. that's really important. Is what do you use? And she had yeah. five sources. You know, I have to use a pastebin document because right. I have anywhere yeah. thirty to yeah. seventy sources per video. I don't yeah. play around. But she had like five sources. You know, one was Wikipedia, one was BuzzFeed, one was like TMZ or BuzzFeed. something. Oh my god. The most, um, yeah. You know. Oh my god. <laughs> yeah. And and those sources are okay for a reference on certain things like mm. i use wikipedia as a starting point because wikipedia will generally give you an outline of where you should start looking so girly pop cannot have her cake and eat it too like let's be real either she's this god-given academic genius of our time or she's just a youtuber and it's not that deep that's what i have to say about that part of it now we move on to the sad milk chapter in this section i believe the philosophy of this was to create a sort of martyr setup for blair before she could turn it into a hit beast before she's shifting the kind of tonality this section relays the beginning of the channel, the so-called overwhelming responsibility that she had to take on, and the short time of the channel and its conflicts that existed. Discussing Sad Milk now in current day is always a little bit bittersweet for me. It was a fun project among friends that turned sour. The issues I'm about to address cost me some of my closest friends at that time. When the Sad Milk channel was formed, I initially took the lead and I made the channel, I made the Discord, I got my mods from my server to help run the new Discord, I hired and managed video editors to help us produce more content. I was the one who was sourcing the topics and files for each video, and I was the one who had set the schedules for recording too. The reality of the situation was this, with creators in different time zones, it was logistically pretty hard to get everyone together at one place in one time. We tried to do it organically multiple times, but unfortunately someone would always end up missing from the recordings. There's a lot of work behind the scenes that goes into a YouTube channel, and I bore the brunt of it for this project. And it wasn't something that I was doing to have total control as some members have suggested. I managed the schedules and the editors because it was just something that needed to be done. People weren't stepping up to the plate, and I did, and I ultimately bit off more than I could chew. It was a lot of work, if we're being honest, and I was beginning to burn out pretty quickly. Had I known how I would have been treated through this channel and afterwards, I never would have joined this project. This is solidifying this logic that she has that she was demonstrably wrong and follows this audience expectation of providing proof and screenshots while maybe not of the best quality by showing contracts, schedules as well, which that also dips into the sort of judicial rhetoric section as well. That's all I have to say about that because again, in the videos I've linked down below, they go through that part of the timeline way deeper. I don't want to. Because again, who am I to just recycle the same thing? Like, 
what happened is what happened. It's the same across all of us. Now we move on to the click. This is where the video begins to lose a lot of people. This is because the video here begins to switch from a sort of apology to like a hit piece. And this begins to stray away from the audience expectations of what they were going to see upon coming into the video. Because rather than it being a video vindicating herself and kind of owning up to maybe mistakes that she's actually made, it moved to shifting blame and attempting to use receipts to shift blame. So Blair states that the click allowed a to come into the Discord server, as I mentioned, and she had to intervene. Click showed that this was not the case. And this is an example of a sort of no of a sort of no you argument to justify her cruel actions and cruelty towards people. If these people are dangerous, then it is my ability to, or it's my destiny or my job to like ruin their lives so that, you know, they kind of rue the day, you know? It's this sort of kind of eye for an eye mentality, even though she is misrepresenting it in order for her actions to seem equal to the misdeeds that these other people did. When Click didn't initially take action, I switched tactics with him and I called one topic, who was and still is to my understanding, one of the Click's closest friends on social media. I got into a call with both of them and I shared these files with them. And one topic opened the files, he was horrified, and he said, and I quote, I've read one and I don't want access to those screenshots. It was after this conversation that Click took action and reported and removed that individual from his server. I really wouldn't lightly make accusations like this unless I had seen them for myself. And let me be abundantly clear here, I am not trying to accuse the Click of pedophilia, nor do I have any reason to believe that he could be a pedophile. With the claims of slurs as well, I feel that's simply a scare tactic and form of deflection to her own poor treatment to the click i think with the click it was because she didn't know him like super well like he didn't live in her house or anything it became that she was scrambling for anything to make her seem less bad than him it didn't really it wasn't really uh i'm innocent here's why it became a i am lesser of the two evils style which i've noticed on youtube very rarely bodes well for people so the next person she came for was wonderstruck guy trigger warning for mental health for this section as well this section, I cannot and will not rhetorically analyze because that's me reducing myself to Blair's level and making theatrics of someone's mental health issues because Blair talks about hiring Wonder, then being his landlord, providing him with an expensive car that he could not afford, thus hypothetically, allegedly in Minecraft, trapping him in an overpriced rent-to-own contract, controlled every aspect of his life, and essentially made him into this, like, editing workhorse that was stuck in her, allegedly, hypothetically, in Minecraft, disgusting house, and then showing private messages to kind of show his state. That he insinuates that he had intention to and was taking action to arm himself to end his life. In a message directly with me, he explicitly told me that, quote, I was legit trying to get into my dad's gun cabinet to fucking kill myself. Either way, out of concern, I called the Austin Police Department non-emergency line to ask for a wellness check. And when I explained to the operator what was the situation at hand, they immediately transferred me to the 911 dispatcher. I then read the messages to them and I gave the 911 operator the last known place of his residence in Texas, which was his dad's house, to perform a wellness check. The operator then told me not to arrange anything unless the police force is present. In his messages, Wonder states that he received a call from his therapist, which ultimately pulled him out of his intended plan. And let's take a moment to discuss the therapist. During his time in Colorado, he expressed that he wanted to seek therapy, and I think that's a fantastic decision. To help him with his process, I messaged my old therapist, who I did a lot of EMDR therapy with, and helped me immensely. On screen is me reaching out to her to see if she was accepting any new clients. Confidential details are going to be censored in order to keep Wonder's privacy and integrity. Looking back, I probably shouldn't have recommended a therapist who was so life-changing for me to somebody else. Therapy is a continual journey. You can come in and out as needed. And unfortunately, after I recommended Wonder to this therapist, there began a conflict of interest and I could no longer in good conscience see her for her services. Wonder- It's almost like it really feels like that like 
crazy ex-girlfriend argument that a lot of like toxic partners would use of like, of course I treated her like crap because she was crazy. Like it's just, <sighs> but what she wanted to do was build herself up as someone who provided so much for someone who couldn't even meet the bare minimum to position it into a form of betrayal. And that's what I found from that kind of Illuminati exposed video and the just disgusting tactics that she had in the way that she wanted to uplift herself. And I think it's truly pitiful to treat people that way and to think that this is a, like, it goes to show how blind she is to, like, true, say, entre, intrapersonal interactions. I learned that word in French. <laughs> See, uh, entire, I, I, yeah, so intra, interpersonal kind of concepts with people and the way that like you talk to somebody, it really shows how twisted her perception is that she's like, I need to villainize people because if you need, so let's say this is like the level of you are perfectly evil and perfectly good. She's, Wait, the, let's do the, I need, a, I need a, something, a reference piece. So let's say the top of the microphone right there is you're perfectly good and you're perfectly evil. Like you're right down the middle. Most people are sitting right here, okay? Blair sits down here. What she needed to do was to get Wonder down here as opposed to actually being up here. Does that make sense? She had to make herself less awful or seem less awful because it seems that she's just not good. And that's such a strange approach to apparently vindicate yourself. Okay, last part before the conclusion. Part four, leftist mafia podcast. So this part has become general updates also incorporated with the leftist mafia podcast update because even though I spent 20 days on the script because I kept pushing it because of more updates, I filmed it yesterday and more stuff came out. So I am going to put it in here because I can't put this off any longer. XOXO Gossip Girl Bye. So for those of you who don't know, Blair was part of a podcast called The Leftist Mafia, which featured Mike Figueredo, David Dole, a lady who just goes by Olay, Matt Binder, and Lance, uh, who is from the Surfs. Okay. Podcast recently came under fire for two reasons. Firstly, the podcast dismissed the allegations upon first hearing them as kind of boiling it down to just YouTube drama. I mentioned this way back in like, Jesus, part two or something. Uh, and then, and that they wanted to give Blair the space to respond and perhaps come on the show. Olay said that she in particular was really vouching for Blair to come onto the show. Then Lance earlier like a few weeks ago was defending Blair in a video where people said it was simping but it was also a lot of really bad timing because the amount of time from recording to editing to publishing videos had come out or began to come out about Blair being really evil allegedly hypothetically in Minecraft so it just the optics looked rough like it was just a lot of bad news bears all mixing in together on May 25th, which as of recording was yesterday, the leftist mob streamed talking about how they watched Blair's video in isolation and fell victim to kind of just knowing who she is, where you only see that video come up for you. You know what I mean? Like, even for me, like, I, and a lot of people covering this, they didn't know who Wonderstruck was. They didn't know who click, who the click was. And they just saw Blair randomly put out a video. And like I said, went into it being like, oh, I guess this is about the legal eagle thing. And then she begins throwing in all of these other people. In the chat said, objectively, this sucks. I would much rather have Blair explain herself and have a conversation with all of you instead of just dropping where no potential for change. This is why the left loses. Respectfully, that's that's ass. That's not, that's not the case here. We've actually been 
incredibly to our own detriment, we've received an excess- that's asked. <laughs> no, yeah, we've received an excessive <laughs> amount of criticism because we gave a lot of grace in this situation. And we have given Blair ample opportunity to explain herself. Blair has a massive YouTube channel bigger than all of our channels, even with the loss of subscribers, bigger than all of our channels. She is continuing to upload videos. She is choosing, for whatever her own reasons, not to address it, explain herself. And again, I made clear, and for that reason, I have seen my thumb, my face on several, several thumbnails slandering me because the last time we addressed it because I said that I did speak to her and obviously she did not share with me what the nature of this situation is because like I said when we, when we addressed it on the after show for those who've seen it I said I didn't know I didn't I did not watch the exposés because I was not somebody going to go out of my way I figure this is drama I, that's what I thought we're always mm -hmm. like you know to echo the earlier it also sentiment. started way more minor but, too right but, but, it's like yeah. it was like, let's, 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 like little things that like escalated yeah, no, to bigger right. things right. Like, we, we, should, we should make it we should make it clear that th those first videos like I listen I, I really have a hard time watching videos like that based on YouTube drama and mm -hmm. those first videos were that they were even titled as such like I'm not even like just a myself I'm like uh, describing it as that some of the videos I saw when people told me oh you gotta watch this video it was like the Illuminati drama explained the controversy mm. around Illuminati like they also addressed something that I've mentioned before where on YouTube there's often and in the leftist sphere as well there's often just so much silly criticism and they talk about that all the time they're like there's such silly criticism about us all over twitter or whatever that when we saw this we didn't think it was anything more than the silly criticism that we see all the time and obviously as we know from this painfully long video that was not the case and with that that is about it for that they said that we are no longer having Blair on the podcast. She is removed from the podcast. These things are super serious and do not represent us as a group. And we really feel that these actions are just like just terrible and that she can't really come back with this. She, it would take like a way to somehow prove that they lied about everything in order to be able to come back in good conscience. So they have removed her from the podcast for those of you who were wondering. And that's about it, really. So as we could have probably guessed, it's not over and I was wrong in that statement I just made. I It is one o'clock in the morning on the 28th of May right now. You are seeing this at about 14 hours from now, hopefully, if I did anything right. And there have been more updates since I attempted to have a life since the beginning of editing this video and went out for dinner, and it's big news. So here I am to deliver it to you before I Nabber makes another video and I don't make a cent off of this one and can't feed my dog the fancy food from the pet store anymore. Anyways, back to the next part, which is going to be Blair's statement. So let's move right on to that. Toodaloo. So let's read over this. Hello, everyone. I am fully aware of the recent false allegations that have surfaced. I want to take a moment to publicly state that I am taking these allegations seriously and am committed to rectifying the situation promptly and appropriately. I understand the concerns and potential impact that these false allegations have caused. My team and I are actively working behind the scenes to gather all relevant facts. I am committed to transparency and accountability through the process. Rest assured that I am taking decisive action to address the situation. I'll provide updates and communicate any necessary actions as soon as possible. Thank you to those who are standing by me during this challenging time. I will not allow these false allegations to be weaponized as a way to silence my voice. I appreciate your patience and understanding during this challenging time. I am dedicated to upholding my channel's values and delivering on our commitments. I am confident that the truth will prevail. Sincerely, Blair Zahn. There are not enough iced strawberry oat matcha lattes in the world to get me to be able to add a single extra line to the script. So I'm going to just freestyle this one. So if I can hypothetically, allegedly in Minecraft confidently say anything is this is a statement drafted by a lawyer, <laughs> obviously with Full name, sincere, structuring with 
resting assured the pro like there's never an admittance of any specific detail obviously just a admission of a gathering process and i think a lot of this is it's written in a very neutral yet simultaneously quite threatening tone because there is affected there are the proper parties which means multiple different uh, types of people i would assume some quote-unquote unbiased parties along with bias towards blair parties and somebody on legal and perhaps a PR or social media manager might even be in on that one. So moral of the story is this is in my humble opinion, another little ironic thing because she says she will not be scared into silencing her voice yet. This statement by nature seems to have that as a goal, but the voices silenced would be like the click and wonderstruck guy and all that kind of stuff and Oz media. So with this, there is a response from Wonderstruck Guy that I've seen. So let's read that. Blair, aka Illuminati, just sent me a cease and desist for speaking out against her abuse. I will not be silenced. That was tweeted by Hi, I'm Wonder under Wonderstruck YT. This is Wonderstruck Guy from the original video in which the click replied. This is his only response I had seen as of right now, besides retweeting wonderstruck's tweet click says the following english isn't my first language but this is an odd translation of taking accountability these again are statements that are very different kind of connotation and honestly you know, like denotation and connotation to them to be honest just fully different in function in every way both literally and figuratively um as in no looming higher power things such as a legal team in this case because they would not be phrased this way but that is the response i have seen so far wonderstruck's tweet had very positive responses a lot of people seemed super supportive so that's great um as far as the rest of the video goes this is the update as of 1 a.m eastern standard time on may 28th 2023 if something else happens i'll make a part two because at this point i think my eyes are gonna melt anyways slay have great conversations and dialects love y'all okay later and that's it for the video yay so to conclude socks to sock blair rest in piss rip bozo links sources including an email to suggest longer form content as well as ways to support the channel, YouTube, um, YouTube members, Patreon, all that kind of stuff, any affiliate links, everything like that, all linked down below. I want to thank my members and patrons once again. Squish Gang is tired of me talking. I have been filming for a really long time and have not shut up once. And with all of this going down, I wish the click and wonderstruck a fabulous career for the foreseeable future and i wish all of you who are still here a very amazing day or night or whatever time it is wherever you are i'll see you when i see you bye oh hell no <laughs>